I just saw Wonder Woman. The first appearance of Wonder Woman on the back page. I saw her. Bryce Comics. In this video, we have an incredibly special journey that you get to go on with me, acquiring and working with three of some of the biggest grails in comic books, Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, All-Star Comics number eight, the first appearance of Wonder Woman, and Incredible Hulk number one, the first appearance of the Incredible Hulk, also Hulk number two through six, but the bulk of the value is in those three books. So all of these books, by the time you're watching this, have been sent off to CGC to be graded. They will be available for sale through Bryce Comics, uh, through the website, and I hope to offer them all up for trade over on my Instagram page so make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video it should be in about two weeks when these books come back and in so doing it will enter you to win a free slab this month we're giving away spider-man number 12 that kiss between miles and gwen i just did a spec video about this and i mentioned this was a good spec book and i didn't realize i had one at cgc the next day it came back from cgc after that video posted and i thought well crap now i can't sell this book people will accuse me of pump and dump so you, the only thing you can accuse me of here is pump and give away. That's how we do it here on Bryce Comics. We do tons of giveaways. I also have a giveaway every month at the newsletter at brycecomics.com. All you have to do is sign up and you're entered to win. And of course, follow me over on Instagram. That's where I post uh, these grail trades and there should be some for these three books. In this video, we're going to actually go in the car and go take a look at this collection. We're going to take a closer look at the books themselves. I'm going to talk about the details of the deal that was made. And I'm also going to talk about the backstory of these comic books and the backstory of this amazing fantasy 15 is absolutely mind-blowing i mean i was sitting there my jaw was dropped when he was telling me the story of this amazing fantasy 15 you got to hear this story but before we hop into that let's hop into the car and go look at this collection All right, guys, here we go. We're in the car. We're finally gonna go pick up a collection. It's not every day I get to do this. I think there's just not that many people that live around me that have collections, but we got one. We're going to the beautiful town of Natomas. Just a quick little jaunt. Well, we did it, folks. We got the comics, we got the books. They're right there. I had full intentions of filming the entire process. I brought my camera, I brought this, um, you know, a little setup here, a clean piece of paper, some clean bags and boards to show the process of checking for restoration because I checked for restoration. And he took the books out. And uh, the moment he took them out, my hand started shaking like a leaf. And I thought, there's no way that I can film this video. So I apologize about that part. So I wanted to give you guys a better look uh, before I ship them off to CGC here and throw the AF-15 in the press. Um, so again, by the time you're watching this, these are actually already off and on their way to CGC. Um, but here's that All-Star 8, and as you can see, man, it just presents beautifully. I mean, it's been in this top loader for 30 years. It's just in a top loader here, that, and this top loader was inside of a bag and board. And it's been that way for 30 years, so I don't see any reason uh, to change that now. A couple things to note about this is it does appear that uh you know we have this little piece missing off the spine there it does appear that both of the staples are completely detached um i didn't want to open it up too much and, and see uh, how bad the damage is at the staples but look at those colors look at how they just pop here's the back cover as you can see you know no huge chunks missing no big pieces but as you can see here a little piece out there at the bottom that was folded up and um, you can see this is the back side of the staple where you can see it's pretty much gone all the way through and um, and you know every time that this book is handled it risks getting a little upturn like that on the side so it's really important that it has very very minimal handling because of that all right so here's something that was really interesting it's the bag and board that this book came in uh, back in august of 1991 it appears like and this is you know before cgc and so it gives like all of the uh the grading criteria and it looks like they did it here on a scale of uh one to a hundred mint being a hundred anything to 99 near mint is an 90 etc and so this book got a 15 out of 100 um, and it says that it is not restored and uh, one thing that's interesting is it says that the top staple is nearly detached 
So, you know, between here and 1991, the staple did become fully detached. So here's the AF-15, and I am absolutely able to handle it much better now. My hands have uh, stopped their shaking, and I can show you guys, because I am going to uh, start working on this and throw it in the press. You can see there are plenty of pressable defects uh, on the surface. The back of the book, there is this stain up here in the top right corner that could be removed and when you actually look at you know the overall color of the back um the camera is kind of picking it up wider than it is but you know it, it can be uh cleaned with with a treatment to get that stain off and lighten the colors of the back but we decided not to do that because of the inherent risk i mean it's such an old book and it, you really risk, you know, compromising the integrity of the paper. It could, you know, you, you start flirting with the possibility of it coming back restored and it's just not worth it. So we're just going to do a standard, regular, um, you know, add humidity press um, and, and do some detail work and call it good on this one. So here are the Hulks. Here's Hulk number one. I think this is somewhere, you know, between a 1.5 and a 2.5. You know, it's kind of a toss up. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Marvel chipping and stuff on the side. I mean, this, this book is, it's completely detached. It's got two big uh, stamps on the front. Uh, I think 2.0 would, we'd be very happy with a 2.0 on that one. Same with this one, low grade tape on the cover, but it's a Hulk number two. Number three, also low grade. Number four, also low grade. Number five, also low grade. And number six, uh, probably the, the nicest of all of them here is number six, but still a lower grade. But still, it's nothing short, excuse my pun, it's nothing short of incredible to see all six of these together in their original form, Hulk one through six. So I'm just sitting here thinking and contemplating how weird this world is, how odd this is that here I am in a random parking lot in Natomas, California. I don't think I've ever been here before. And it's just wire transferred $50,000 to a complete stranger. I mean, we have a contract we went through and did our due diligence. And, you know, obviously there's mutual respect and trust between the two of us. But the fact that I sent $50,000 to a complete stranger for essentially three comic books. The other day I was driving with my son, he was in the back seat here and I was telling him about this deal and I was all excited and he's four years old and he said, he said, wait a second, he said, dad, don't you know that comic books are just paper? And I said, oh my God, Lucas, you are exactly right. They are, they're just paper. And he said, so what are you so excited about? And I was just, the whole day I was laughing. I couldn't wait to tell people that story, but he's got a great point, they're just paper. And the, the crazy thing about this though, is that the $50,000 that I sent him is also just paper. The $50,000 is only worth $50,000 because we all agree that it is. And the Amazing Fantasy 15 is only worth $50,000 or whatever grade it comes back at because we all agree that it's worth $50,000. So it's only that we believe in them. And I'm just sitting here contemplating that, tripping out on that. And you add to that the fact that I wire transferred him this money. So it's not even cash. It's not even money. It's just a uh, digit somewhere in the internet that was associated with my bank account to his bank account. How does that work? But anyways, uh, just some really awesome, cool, everything about it is just so cool. I feel I am I am floating right now. I feel amazing having, you, I just saw Wonder Woman, the first appearance of Wonder Woman on the back page. I saw her, I saw that first image that Steve Ditko drew of Spider-Man, that iconic, I'll put it up on the screen, Ditko depiction of, uh, of Spider-Man. I think it's like the secret rare for the NFT of Amazing Fantasy 15. And man, I'm just flying. It's so much fun. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me on the ride. And I will say that that was the first time that I've pressed or cleaned or even read or held a raw copy of Amazing Fantasy 15, and that book is fragile. I mean, that, that paper quality is not as good as some of the other Silver Age books uh, that you know I've worked with. It's probably one of the most delicate books that I've had. Not that this particular copy was particularly delicate. In fact, this copy is particularly you know 
well kept it's a really good copy but you know as you see with the marvel chipping and stuff all the time on the amazing fantasy 15s something about that book and the ink uh and the process it, it's just incredibly hard to keep it in high grade so this book with very little marvel chipping if any at all a uh, super super impressive uh, example of uh, amazing fantasy 15. so now i want to talk about the deal so the seller reached out to me and he said hey i have these books for sale and of course when i got that and i saw the pictures i'm like holy crap crap like you know am I getting fished first of all uh, and so I said you know the best thing to do would be have a conversation give me a call and let's talk about this so he called me became very clear right away wasn't getting fished this was a real deal um, and the seller uh, you know just needed some money to do some renovations on his house and came time to uh, let go of these he bought them raw and had them raw all this time and so I said you know how much do you want for him he said well that depends on what grade we agree that they are currently in the condition that they're currently in and I thought about it and I thought there's really just no way that I could buy these books raw. I just was not comfortable buying these books raw. If one of them were to come back uh, restored uh, or qualified or something like that, it would just completely kill the value of the book. And so if I was buying them raw based on blue label prices, it just I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. So I said, how about this? How about I give you $50,000? You can have the money up front. You can do the renovations on your house, You know, get done what you need to get done. You give me the books, I'll have them pressed and cleaned, you know, whichever ones can actually benefit from it, send them off to CGC, have them graded, and then when they come back, sell them through my shop, and then I'll just take a reasonable percentage uh, of the sale price. And I told him the reasonable percentage I'd be willing to take, and he said, listen, Brian, I'm a businessman, I can pay you a little bit more than that. So I said, even better, you know, the price that I offered, he said, I can do a little bit better, which was awesome. Um, it's really awesome to work with people that are really reasonable and understand the business side of things. Um, and so I'm going to leave it at that, that it was a very reasonable percentage. I don't want to throw the actual percentage out there because uh, if somebody were to see this and want to do a transaction like this with me, I can almost guarantee that the parameters and the deal is going to be different because this was based off of what these books were in this specific situation and what needed to be done. But it suffices to say that, you know, he chose to go with me and I'm honored that he chose to go with me uh, because, you know, you have options when you have books like this but the fact that he did decide to go with me says something about you know the price that I was willing to offer he did say that he called one other shop and uh, told him what books he was trying to sell they offered him 30% of fair market value and he hung up on them <laughs> and so one of the benefits too of doing it with me is that you know you get the video log of the whole process you know and that's not nothing so in this case what I really hope to do is when they come back offer them up for trade and the way that would work is say the Amazing Fantasy 15 comes back uh, as like a $50,000 book in the conditions it's in, I would offer it for trade for about $55,000. And uh, because of all the extra work that goes into actually selling those additional books, uh, you know, inevitably fair market value to actually move those books, you have to kind of undercut the price a little bit. So, you know, reasonable people understand the markup on the trade because of everything that goes into it. It's not apples to apples. There's a lot of work involved, especially for such a high dollar amount but it is absolutely one of the most satisfying parts of this job is to be able to hook someone up with their grout with a mid-grade copy beautifully presenting amazing fantasy 15 uh, for trade that they otherwise would not be able to get so to be a part of that to be able to connect the dots between these uh, you know three parties and make this magic work where the end result is the seller's happy I make a little bit of a profit can support my family and the end uh, collector gets his grail in trade no money out of pocket it's a win-win-win it's such a rewarding process in this business and you know it doesn't always work out but when it does it's really really sweet so now I want to say the backstory of these comic books. So uh, starting with the Amazing Fantasy 15. So he told me the story. He was 12 years old when Amazing Fantasy 15 came out. And he said that he had a comic book shop and the owner's name was Crazy Earl. And he pre-ordered Amazing Fantasy 15. That right there blew my mind. I thought, what? You were pre-ordering books back in the 1960s? And he said, yes, we knew that Spider-Man was coming. I pre-ordered it for 12 cents. And 
that blew my mind because I thought Spider-Man was kind of like a surprise deal. But apparently, you know, this guy, Crazy Earl, had a newsletter where he announced stuff. And trust and believe it was a literal letter, a newsletter that was like typed out on a typewriter and sent out in the mail. That was the newsletter back then. And it said that there was Spider-Man coming to the point where the seller pre-ordered it for 12 cents. He had a paper route and a bicycle, and that's how he earned the money to pre-order this book. So when the day came out, he went to Crazy Earl and said, he was all excited and he said, where's my Amazing Fantasy 15? And Crazy Earl said, it didn't come in. And he went away sad and he came back the next week and he said, still didn't come in. The next week, still didn't come in. Five weeks later, he finally comes back and says, is my Amazing Fantasy 15 in? And Earl says, yeah, it came in, but I can no longer give it to you for 12 cents. I have to get $10 for it. And the seller of the AF15 said, screw you. I'm never coming back here again. And he left and he did not uh, acquire the Amazing Fantasy 15 at that time and never went back to that comic book shop. Fast forward to 1980 or so, and he bought the book for $1,000 at a different comic book shop. So what blew my mind about this is that back in the 60s, you had the same shenanigans that you're seeing today on eBay. How many people out there have pre-ordered a book on eBay, and then it turns out to be a super hot book, and when it comes time to ship, the eBay seller says, oh, sorry, uh, you know, I was shorted by Diamond, or I didn't get enough copies, or my copies came in damaged. Now, here's the thing about that. As a retailer, I can tell you that it is absolutely true that shortages and damages happen. Sometimes both short and damaged for shipment. Sometimes it's the whole shipment. I've seen it all as a retailer as far as bad fulfillment of, of product from Diamond Zen. It, it does happen. But it also happens that shops claim you know damages or shortages to keep the pre-order books to sell them for more money it's been happening since 1960 you know personally i have never done that i could say with confidence uh, honest to god i will never do that it's not part of my business model it's just not necessary okay I, I don't need the money that bad the few dollars that bad i will never do that but it just blew my mind that that was happening way back in 1960. And it made me think, you know, a lot of times you see a lot of negativity on social media where people will say, you know, such and such is ruining the hobby or this new fad in comics is ruining the hobby. Guys, let's remember or at least be open to the idea that this has been happening from the beginning. The same gimmicks, the same problems, the same everything has been happening since the beginning of comics. And it's just a little bit of perspective to take on it, you know, is that we're dealing with human problems, all right? The problem isn't so much, you know, the people in the community. The problem is that we're human and, and, and we have these same kind of things repeat themselves over time. So I was totally shocked about that. The Wonder Woman 8, he said he paid $800 for, and I would imagine that he actually paid quite a bit less for the Hulk 1 through 6. So that's the wonderful story of these incredible, wonderful, and amazing comic books. No pun intended, a little bit of pun intended. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this ride. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment on this video, and like this video to be entered to win a free slab and head over to BriceComics.com, sign up for the newsletter and get entered to win another slab. Uh, follow me over on Instagram to get notified when these grails come back and are available for trade. And also follow me on Whatnot, link down in the description for $15 towards your first purchase. We're having a ton of fun weekly on Whatnot. I really love to get to connect with you guys over there. Thank you as always for sticking with me to the end of the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.